You want to learn JavaScript, but you spend week after week jumping from one tutorial to another and only learning surface level syntax. After a month, the only thing you have to show for your efforts is a pile of discarded, half completed tutorials, and you still can't build anything on your own. I've been there. As someone who's worked as a software engineer for the past eight years and taught at coding boot camps, I know how frustrating it is to put in the hours day in and day out, but still not make the progress you feel like you should have made. In this video, I'm going to share with you the most efficient efficient way to learn JavaScript fast, the best resources on the internet, as well as some science-backed strategies so that you learn effectively without wasting time. For more than a decade, JavaScript has been the most popular programming language, at least according to the annual Stack Overflow survey. Not only does JavaScript power the user interactions of most web applications today, but it's also used in the back end as well as mobile apps and desktop apps. Fun fact, even the Mars Rover's user interface is built using Node.js. JavaScript gets a ton of flack, and rightly so, for its quirks and unpredictable behavior. But if you eventually want to work in web development, then it's a guarantee you're going to have to learn this language sooner or later. If your end goal is to get a job in tech relatively fast, then JavaScript is a good choice given how in demand it is, especially for junior positions. And speaking from experience as a full stack developer, nearly every job I've come across has listed JavaScript, TypeScript, or some modern JavaScript framework as one of their requirements. Despite some YouTube videos making the claim that you can learn JavaScript in an hour, I find that it's one of those skills where you can definitely get the grasp of the core concepts in a week or two, but it will take you months, if not years to master and be able to use JavaScript proficiently on complex projects. I try not to be prescriptive because obviously I don't know your personal situation, but from my experience, mentoring at a coding boot camp as well as learning JavaScript on my own, it takes at least a couple months of studying three to four hours a day to get a solid understanding of the core principles. Also, the time it takes to learn JavaScript is going to depend heavily on your background and how efficiently you're able to learn new skills. There are no hacks in mastering a skill. That being said, when I think back to the process I went through learning JavaScript and helping other people learn programming, I noticed there were a lot of things we did that were completely ineffective. So I wanna go over some of the ways we can ensure the time and energy we spend doesn't go to waste. But first, learning a new programming language can be intimidating given the sheer amount of information online. There are a ton of tutorials out there, but it's hard to decide what to invest your time in. If you want a quick all-in-one guide that gives you a gentle introduction to the language, check out this free introduction to JavaScript guide from HubSpot. It takes you through what JavaScript is, how it's most often used, and the basics of the language without overwhelming you with a ton of technical jargon. What I like most about this guide is that it's useful both to people who are new to programming as well as someone looking to just refresh their knowledge of the syntax. For example, the section on scope gives you an easy to understand overview of a fundamental concept that trips up a lot of new developers. And this section on data structures will also get you quickly up to speed if you just want an overview or you're coming from another language. This comprehensive guide is a great introduction to learning to code with JavaScript, and I recommend you try it out by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you HubSpot for kindly sponsoring this video. First, stop obsessing about trying to find the best resource. You're just wasting time starting from scratch over and over again. At the end of the day, the top resources or tutorials you find online are all going to be fairly similar and it's not going to make that much of a difference which one you choose. The most important thing is that you stay consistent and you finish them. I'm going to mention some of my favorite resources that are battle tested later on in the video and you can't really go wrong with those. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, please leave me a like and subscribe as it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. It's natural to think that you've learned a lot if you've managed to get through a ton of videos or you've read like five chapters in one morning, but none of that really matters if you can't retain or apply the information. I found that it is much better to take my time to go through the material 
at the pace that I need and to go through all of the exercises at the end multiple times if necessary, even if it feels slower in the moment. Side note, there was a study done a while ago that showed college students who took a class in economics had no better understanding of real life economic issues than someone who didn't. This just goes to show you that just because you've gone through the information doesn't mean you've gained understanding. At the end of the day, knowledge is not power. It's only power if you're able to remember it and you're able to apply it. Unfortunately, there isn't a great way to measure progress of learning, but the number of concepts that you're comfortable with or implemented and the number of small applications that you've built is a far better measure than the number of tutorials that you've watched. Passively consuming material and tutorials feels productive and good in the moment, but there's a lot of research showing that active recall and direct practice are much more effective methods for deep learning and long-term retention. Active recall is the process of testing yourself on what you've learned without looking at your notes or the answers. There's a ton of research showing that testing yourself periodically helps consolidate the information into long-term memory and it makes it easier to recall in the future. Future. This study, for example, showed that students who read a passage of text and then got tested on the material scored 50% higher than students who simply reread the material. Direct practice, as the name suggests, means to apply what you've learned to a real world application. To put it all together, this means spending a lot more time testing yourself or building projects than you do just watching or reading material. And of course, if there aren't any exercises given to you by the book that you're reading or the tutorial that you're watching, these days you can just ask AI to generate challenges that test your understanding. You might be super excited and motivated to start right away, but the thing is, motivation is quite temporary. Like other in-demand skills, learning programming will be frustrating at times, so it's a really good idea to commit to a schedule before you start. If you just try to fit it in whenever you have free time, it's likely never going to happen. If you can, make it the first and most important thing you do every day and you won't have to rely so much on your willpower. And I just want to mention that even though the title of this video is learn learn JavaScript fast, unless you're cramming for a technical interview, there's a lot of evidence showing that it's a lot better to space out your sessions and learn at a reasonable pace so that it gives you time to actually let the knowledge sink in. The faster you go, the faster you're going to forget. And so the quickest path is often the slow and steady one. All right, now I'm going to go over where to start, as well as my favorite resources, both paid and free. Also, a lot of JS courses are going to be focused on interacting with HTML, so it's a good idea to spend at least a few days getting a working understanding of HTML and CSS before learning JavaScript. If you do a quick internet search, you'll see that the Odin project comes up again and again, and for good reason. I'm not sponsored by the Odin project, but I can tell you that their free full stack JavaScript curriculum is top notch and the format is followed by a lot of modern coding boot camps. To me, it looks fairly comprehensive and the courses really build on top of each other so you don't get paralysis analysis, analysis paralysis by trying to decide what to do next. And although it's pretty self-directed, it is entirely free and they have a Discord community if you need help. When it comes to programming, I try not to recommend books because things change so frequently that programming books can get outdated soon after they're published. But if you love reading physical books like I do, I'm ecstatic to see that O'Reilly released a brand new edition of their head first JavaScript book. When I was learning JavaScript way back in the day, I read the 2014 edition and I loved how whimsical and fun the head first books were. They are all amazing. Unlike other technical or programming books, the Head First series isn't boring and a complete slog to get through. They're actually fun to read and easy to understand with their pictures and analogies and their sense of humor. And it's nice to finally see a programming book for beginners that doesn't overwhelm you right away with the technical details. The downside is that the book is a little pricey. So if you want a free resource, I also love Scrimba's Intro to JavaScript course. They include a ton of mini challenges and exercises throughout their lessons, which makes it a lot more easy to stay engaged. And you know how I mentioned earlier how important 
important it is to constantly test yourself when you're watching these tutorials. It's really nice that Scrimba's um, courses come with those challenges and coding exercises built in. And I know I've mentioned them before, but I did personally pay for their pro membership many years ago when I was learning React because it's that good. Like I said, all the resources I've mentioned are going to be linked in the description below and all of them except the book are free or have free options. People online say just build stuff all the time, but when you're just trying to learn JavaScript, I can understand if you want to focus only on the code and not be distracted by all the other things that comes with building an app, like designing the UI and thinking about the functional requirements list. So one resource that outsources all of that and I absolutely love is Frontend Mentors. It's a repository of front-end project ideas and they provide you with all the assets and design specs so that you focus only on the coding portion. And as a bonus, your projects look really pretty and who isn't impressed by pretty UIs in their portfolio? Again, totally not necessary, but I personally found it really helpful and they have a lot of free options. If anything, I think they're a great repository of project ideas. If you want to build your own side project, but you're kind of blanking on what kind of features it should have or what the functional requirements should be, then you can prompt ChatGPT for ideas and it'll give you some common feature requirements for popular projects like to-do lists and weather apps if you don't know where to start. Now I want to share with you some of my own project ideas divided into beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels. They're challenges that I've been asked to do in interviews and they test your understanding of the core fundamentals. For beginners, my project ideas include a weather app, a simplified Twitter clone, or a news feed pulling the latest articles from a public API. These mini projects will give you experience making some API calls and doing Doing basic form validation. For intermediates, you could build a tic-tac-toe game with React or a Connect4 game. These projects are a step above basic CRUD apps and get you to think a little bit outside the box. And if you're advanced, I would try building a simplified Slack clone or real-time messaging app. This project was a capstone project for the bootcamp that I used to teach at, and it's a full stack application, and you're gonna get experience building the front end, building the back end, connecting the two together, and working with WebSocket. If you've gone through everything that I've mentioned so far and you're ready to look for a job, I've made a video on that recently. It'll walk you through how to find a job as efficiently as possible in the current job market. So if you're interested, I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.